He's one of the favorites for the elite race this afternoon. Well, Simon, take us through the course here. Yeah, it's, um, it's basically a flat, what is actually now a floodplain, um, as we've come to know in the last few days. We'll talk about that a little bit more, I'm sure. But we've got a flat floodplain with a bank rising up to uh, River Road. And up and down the bank, we've, got, uh, we've actually got five dismounts per lap for the riders. Maybe four if uh, the elite guys can ride the hurdles and one of the climbs. I doubt it in this con these conditions. We've got... Um, yeah, it's a steep bank and they've made good use of it. They've, they've included some very severe off-camber sections, both to the left and to the right. So it's, it's, um, it's a challenging bit of hill. They've got two run-ups, one over stone steps, one at railway, railway ties, um, set of hurdles. There's the, uh, the infamous Louisville Green Monster, which is the flyover that they use for all their races here, which is a, a step up, ride down. Um, but again, it's the ground conditions that are gonna make this race and it's the ground conditions that are gonna change like as the day continues and then we're seeing the flood barrage that's trying to stop the waters coming in and why we had to uh, change the schedule from the original two day to one day that's right we have to tell everybody it was going to be a two-day event but the all of these events are going to be happening today down here along the banks of the ohio river and there you look at the uh, starting list for uh, the competitors in this field Yep, looking at the U.S. riders there. One of the big race favorites today, Logan Owen. Second in, uh, second in the world ranking behind Mathieu van der Poel, who is, he's the out-and-out -out favorite for this race. The defending champion, unbeaten this year, unprecedented set of results for him. The son of the great Andrew van der Poel. And while, of course, uh, there are uh, a lot of European fans that have traveled to this, it's extraordinary as the crowd really is starting to fill in now. But, uh, Simon, uh, there are a lot of American fans and Canadian fans that have come down here to witness this historic event. Yes, we've had Masters World Championships in, this, in the week leading up to this Elite World Championships just a kilometer down the road uh, at the same, the same venue, but a different park and... We've had hundreds of Masters races with their families and fans and supporters, so they're all they're all here to watch the elite race as well. So it's it's been a week of a week of cyclocross. And a look at our uh, public address announcers there. Yeah, Richard Fries and Brad Sona, Peter van der Nabili checking out the start list. The uh, the off road boss of the UCI. The, uh, the call-up for the junior race, it's based on the, the top 16 from the World Cup ranking get called up in order. And then uh, riders not in the top 16 in the World Cup then get called upon world ranking, which is slightly different. That includes all the races on the UCI calendar for the juniors, resulting in a UCI ranking. There's Van der Poel. He's been here before. He knows what to do in a World Championships. Won last year in Coxide of Belgium in the sand. This is totally different conditions to that one. And we saw his father last night, legendary cyclocross star indeed. Yeah. Well, Simon, we're going to see a lot of racing today, but undoubtedly this is a huge step forward for the United States to host these championships. It is, you know, and I hope hopefully it'll, it'll continue to grow over here and we'll see maybe World Cup in the future and this continued international racing and, and the, the, the American riders of the old guard, uh, the, the Tim Johnsons and uh, some of the, the guys that have been around for 10 years or so, you know, Tim was an under 23 world medalist back in 99 in uh, Poprad, Slovenia. He'll, he's generation, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, gonna retire in the next few years and it's the new guys, it's the, um, the under 23s and the juniors here that are, that are coming through and no better inspiration than the world championships in their, in their own country to to fuel that international ambition to to go ba maybe base themselves in europe every now and again and ride the world cup circuit and uh, carry on where the the pioneers of cross jonathan page world medalist tim johnson danny summerhill all racing here today have all won world medals katie compton of course one of the favorites for the women's race in a couple of hours you just saw, of course, uh, Logan Owen out of Bremerton, Washington. A phenomenal season for him for the United States. Yeah, Logan's, uh, Logan's had a, he's a, a great year. Second in a couple of the World Cups, national champion. And probably the one guy to 
to pose a serious challenge to Van der Poel today, I think. Well, it's been interesting uh, uh, being here and the amount of people that are staying at the uh, hotel, even people, I think, sleeping on the on the floors in the lobby last night I saw. But it, it just shows the incredible passion uh, for this sport. The Absolutely. Belgians were up early, and uh, they're all dressed up in their finery. Yeah, Belgians were flying in yesterday. A long weekend away. Unusual for them to have to travel more than a couple of hours to go watch a World Championship, so uh, it's been a different experience for those guys, for sure. So live and in HD, we welcome you to Louisville, Kentucky. We're about ready to get underway with the junior men's competition. There they are, getting the one-minute call. An immense amount of work have, uh, has gone into the uh, Eva Bandman Park, Simon, to yeah. uh, get this ready for this competition. And the organizing committee has done a brilliant job. They have. They've done a fine job. A couple of years ago, the, the whole banking was just trees and trash and debris from the river from years before. And it's just been, uh, it's been, a, been a journey for the, for the course builders. Now it's time for the junior men lined up and ready to go. Second away from there, just seconds away from their start. Clement Russo there, second in the European Championships. The French guy, another one for a podium possibility today. And here we go, Simon. Game on. Game on indeed. A little bit of uh, wet pavement here at the start. And that brings them right out into the snow. Yeah, Van der Poel and Martin Budding. First and second in the World Cup overall, leading the way. As we start to see this course, we can see the ruts from the last couple of days training that have frozen. It was very, very muddy two or three days ago when the riders first started training. Those ruts have frozen, thawed, and refrozen again. And it's uh, now we've got a covering of snow on them, so you can't really you can't see them as well. Equipment choice, tire choice, tire pressure critical today. As I say, it's going to change a lot. So. Mechanics have been very busy. Riders were busy early on, as soon as it was daylight, looking at the course to see what they were going to decide on today. And Simon, here in the Bluegrass State, of course, uh, I was told this morning that uh, they are not used to getting a lot of snow down here, so this is a little bit unusual. I was just talking to uh, somebody from the city this morning, and they said that January is normally the second driest month of the year for them, and they've had unprecedented weather in the last few weeks. Not so this year. No, not at all which is why the rivers come up. So this is the first run up. Dutch and the Belgians to the fore as expected. Slippery underfoot as well. The, uh, the choice, footwear choice, and whether you put spikes in the front of your shoes is, is a difficult one. One of the run ups is actually on stones, which is quite slippery with the snow covering and the uh, we've got metal steps on this bridge that are, that are covered in a non-slip but and Simon what are we thinking about about tire pressure today for example low very low uh, I was looking at Van der Poel's bikes this morning he's running he's actually running mud tires Dugas Rhinos he's got about 18 psi in so that's about what 1.2 bar something like that soft you could touch the rims through the pits for the first time Again, I don't think it's going to be a bike-changing day for, for for any mud or any accumulation of snow. I think the the temperature has been so low that we've had problems with the, with the the pressure washers freezing up as well. And actually, getting water on the bike isn't a great thing in these temperatures. It just it does freeze on the bike and it freezes on the chain. It freezes cassettes, bottom brackets. It's uh, it's more of a hindrance than a help. So I don't think we'll see too much action in the pits. 
the Masters race a couple of days ago. It was so muddy, the, uh, those guys were changing bikes twice a lap and still barely making it round. This is a good example of the cameras that we're seeing. A lot of off camber on this yeah, course. And there's some slipping and sliding going on there. Nicholas Klepper was off there, back on his bike. See what I mean about the uh, the conditions on the foot? You know, it's slippery. You need something on your shoes that's going to grip on that surface, which is very difficult to to run on. Vanderpool continuing in the lead in this race. That's the actual. That's the stone. That's the stone step run up that um, some of the riders at an earlier U.S. Grand Prix race earlier in the year could ride this. Jeremy Powers, Adam Craig could ride this. In the snow, it's not going to be possible. Can't actually make out this, the, uh, the the big slabs of stone underneath the snow there. But, but what's going to happen? This surface is going to become more slippery as this race goes on and as the day goes on. It's going to get shiny. The the snow is going to. It's not at the moment. It's not above freezing, so the the snow is not going to to melt. It's just going to keep refreezing. And you can see there, just simple corners are becoming slippery already so I think the next few races and the next few laps of this race uh, the riders have got to be so adaptable to, to change in the race the line you take one lap might not necessarily be the line you're looking for subsequently you'll be looking for softer snow that hasn't maybe been ridden on yet to try and get some grip so that's through pit two the second passing through the pit on on the lap it's not quite equidistant the pits on this course it's um 2.8 kilometer lap and the the distance between the the laps sorry the difference between the pits isn't quite equidistant on the pole there riding the hurdles it's a it's a great skill to have but you've got to be confident that you can do it because if you uh, if you miss then you're going to lose more time than you gain but van der Poel very confident one of the italians there riding as well the story of the season for van der Poel has been how how big his winning gap has been he's been winning world cups by up to two minutes he's been phenomenal and i think you know just on this opening lap here we're seeing him riding away from his major competition at the moment. We haven't got the Americans in the in the picture. We've got looks like the two Belgians chasing Van der Poel. No sign of Logan Owen at the moment. And there you can see just the uh, the fans have arrived in huge numbers here today. And it is very cool out there. Fantastic. Two weeks ago, the World Cup final was in uh, these Dutch guys' back garden, Hugeheide, Holland, venue for the World Championships next year. And it was similar conditions to this. Snowed a couple of days before, very cold, very icy. So Van der Poel and Budding looking like they made good use of that spell at home in the snow to, to prepare for this. And those two Dutch guys, they've got a They've got a, some clear air between those and the chasing Belgians. So this is the finishing straight end of lap one. So we're looking at around a seven minute lap. Probably going to be a six lap race. Simon, when you watch him ride, what makes him so exceptional? <laughs> I think he comes from an exceptional gene pool. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, his uh, yeah, his dad's a, a great professional. His grandfather, uh, sorry, his uncle is uh, Raymond Poulidor, um, the eternal second in the Tour de France. He's um, it's just a cycling family, I think. And he's just but been brought up, you know, he's, as a kid, he was running around at bike races, watching his dad race, and he's it looks so it. natural. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Think, yeah. There's Logan Owen in ninth place right now for the United States. He's got some work to do. He wants to make the podium. He was an automatic qualifier uh, for the uh, junior men's squad here for the United States.
those gaps are they're big for this stage of the race. Usually with the juniors, they tend to they tend to group up quite well. So Van der Poel's been out on his own in most races, but generally it's a chasing group has, has, has formed behind him and uh, doesn't look like it's the case today. Nicholas Klepper there in third, one of the four telling it for day a Belgian juniors on the uh, the six-man team. Looks like Yannick Peters there and uh, Ben Butts, teammates. First check rider, Adam Tupalik. I think the surprise for me is the the lack of evidence of the Americans at the uh, in the chasing group here. I was expecting those guys to come out fast and definitely be in the race for the first few laps. And whether they were able to, to stay there or not is was going to be the, the story. But I think they they definitely missed the start here. Martin Budding running in second place. He's been second in the last two World Cups uh, in Rome and in um, I'm sorry, in, uh, in Huga Heider, he was second. In Rome, he was third. He was second overall in the World Cup. And the World Championships are going to be there next year? They are, yeah. Huga Heider, Netherlands, yeah. They were there four or five years ago. Huge crowds. The police had to close the, uh, the highway exits going into town. There were too many people. Not quite the Belgian standards of last year when we saw... 60,000 plus people in Coxide of Belgium. That's the biggest spectator attendance we've had. But well, on this weekend given to the Super Bowl, I'll tell you, this is the Super Bowl of this sport. It is for sure. People have travelled from uh, near and far to come and watch this one, just as they do the, the Super Bowl. And ooh, good attempt there to ride the stones which makes me think that the elite guys might be riding those. That might be possible. Under 23s in the elite might just uh, be able to make that. Now those gaps, that's, that's clear. Those two guys, unless they have some kind of misfortune, are definitely on the podium today that's the size of gap that doesn't come down through somebody riding faster behind you that comes down only through a slipping off just like that that's exactly what we're talking about up and back on fast chain still on the bike but that's just how easy it is for to make a mistake watch that slide just again. starts to pedal coming out of the corner But he's very quick to get back on. Very quick, yeah. And you can see his body language. He's, he's, he's fighting hard, you know. He's be interesting to see if he keeps riding these hurdles. <clears throat> yes, he's going to ride that. Very confident. No problem at all with those. So 25 races this year, Mathieu van der Poel hasn't been beaten in one of them. It's uh, an incredible record for this season. Junior racing, there's, there's always dominant riders, but you never get somebody that's, that's literally unbeatable. And he's so smooth on the bike, too. See so him just pulling himself around on the edge of the fence in there. That's a that's that's a steep camber. The camera angle just 
levels it out slightly, but that is uh, pretty extreme. Rideable earlier in the week, but definitely not today in the snow. Once again, our leader here with four laps to go live with you in Louisville, Kentucky for the Cyclocross World Championships. Now we can get some time gaps. And we're going to keep our eye out for uh, Logan Owen as well for the United States. 15 seconds to budding there. Thirty seconds and counting. Still, nobody else has crossed this line. So, Nicholas Klepper and Yannick Peters, the two Belgians, 34, 35 seconds down. There's Logan, seventh place, 44 seconds down. So, he's got some work to do to uh, to make the front of the race, but podium is possible from that position. Logan, of course, had a second place ranking in the UCI World Cup standings, too. He did, yes. He didn't do every round. He was picking and choosing. He was um, he had a fifth in Pilsen at the first round. He was third in Tabor. Uh, went to Coxider last year's World Championship venue, got a fifth there. So he's been there and thereabouts. You know, he was second in Zolder over Christmas. Um, he was looking to, to, to get enough points to get himself a front row start at these championships that was important for him and he did that over Christmas and it meant that he didn't have to come to the back to Europe for the World Cup finals in Hugo Heide. and the crowd's still coming in here to the Eva Bandman Park there are the chasers right there yeah teammates on their domestic team in back in Belgium know each other well they train together training camps together pre-season they're right on the road together so uh... van der Poel he's on the uh, the feeder team for the BKCP professional team the team of Niels Albert no doubt he's got his professional pathway pretty clearly mapped out Nice position, to be, nice position to be in for an 18-year-old. I'll say. Budding of the Netherlands running in second place. Putting in a strong performance so far. Flag of Colorado right there. Simon, this is just outstanding. I mean, I'm loving the energy here. It's the difference between an American crowd and a European crowd. Americans, they'll cheer for anybody. They make a lot of noise. They're, they're, they don't have favorites in Europe. It's very secular. It's uh, quite tribal. It's, you'll have your rider, you'll cheer for that rider, and then you'll go silent for the rest of the crowd. So uh, the rest of the riders, it's an interesting difference. It can be quite intimidating for... Yeah, for American riders racing in Europe, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a totally different feel. And there is something of a boom in, in cyclocross going on in the United States right now. More people are getting into it, and I think this event uh, can certainly help that continue. I think so. It's a, it's a participation sport in the U.S. It's not a spectator sport. In Europe, especially in Belgium and the Netherlands, Belgium especially, it's a, it's a spectator sport. It's as big as soccer is in Britain or other you know, Spain, Italy, those kind of places right. where soccer is huge. It's cyclocross is the same in Belgium, and it's just regularly 20, 25,000 spectators that have 
probably never done sport in their lives, but they just go every weekend to watch the races and, and to cheer on the, their team, their rider. And it's, a, it's a different, very different atmosphere in the European race. Americans, it's, it's become a, as we've seen with the Masters racing here this week, it's, it's a very, very much a participation event, participation sport. I'm sure the majority of the, the, the crowd here, the Americans watching this race, are, are cyclists of some sort, whether they're road cyclists or mountain bikers or cyclocross riders, but just actual fans of cycling that have never raced before, I would doubt there's more than a handful. Obviously a lot of American fans, but a lot of Canadian flan, the fans here too. Uh, coming down uh, yesterday, I was with a big club that was traveling down here from Toronto. Yeah, got some Canadian, biggest Canadian contingent we've seen at the World Championships. It's not such a problem for them to, to come down here is to, to get to Europe. The big the big problem with with cyclocross, it is a non-Olympic discipline. Its federation support is more limited than it is for, say, mountain bike or BMX or road, obviously, track. Um, but the off-road sports, especially mountain bike. So it's expensive for the European federations to, to bring riders over and for Canadian and American federations to take take teams to to Europe as well so it's has limited team sizes looks like Logan Owen right there yeah looks like to me he's, he's maybe continuing forwards. to pick up he's now moving forwards yeah for sure yeah would be good just to get a feel for how many riders are between Van der Poel and, and Logan Owen at the moment And the pictures and sound just fantastic. You're really drawn into this race. Yeah, I think we've got 18, 19 cameras available for the TV crews here. Not very much of the course that we're not picking up on. So half distance. Three down, three to go. 20 minutes, 20 seconds into the race. Three to go. And of course, we've heard, Simon, that uh, if the water continues to rise along the banks of the Ohio River, a lot of this venue will be perhaps underwater tomorrow. Well, that's the, exactly the reason we've uh, they moved the schedule to every race today. Unprecedented, really, for this to happen, but it's been unprecedented weather in uh, in Kentucky this last week. So serious measures for sure. So 27 seconds to Budding, 43 seconds to Peters, and it's Logan Owen that we need to check. So he's. Gonna be 10 seconds off a podium place at the moment. There he goes Logan by, Owen, moving place. up into fifth place right now. He's really coming on. The U.S. has brought some strong riders here. This this could be a solid championship for the United States in some categories. Yeah, I think they were hoping to, you know, hoping to medal in. As many categories as they can, I think, with with Logan in this one, with uh, Zach McDonald in the under 23s, Katie Compton in the elite women, Jeremy Powers in the elite men. You know, they've got good chances in in races to get some riders in the top 10, and in you know in, in Compton and McDonald and in Owen, you know, good podium potential. Six seconds for Van der Poel. It's a nice cushion to have. It's we've seen how easy it is to slide off. A few seconds here, a few seconds there, but 26 seconds. I think that's probably going to increase to closer to 30 after this lap. There's Adri in the pitch, just telling him to keep calm, nice and steady.
experience counts for a lot in this this position for a junior leading a world championships and he's 12 months ago he was in exactly the same place had to fight for had to fight a little bit more for that win in Coxider but again for, for for a junior rider to repeat is is unusual it's unusual for first year juniors to to get everything right on the first attempt uh, just that extra 12 months of experience of even the World Cup racing and another World Championships under the belt makes a big difference. Looks like Swiss and a check chasing Owen as well. Good to get a number on that. Dominic Grav, Swiss, Switzerland. Sixth in Huga Heider in similar conditions in the snow. 12th overall in the World Cup. Certainly one of the big stories now. Logan Owen from the United States moving up. You know, he talked earlier saying if, if he ro rode the race he was capable of, he could podium. Swiss rider going down. Yeah, that's grab just after the corner there. That's hard, you know, you just lose the wheel, you lose contact with the rider in front, just trying to get your composure back. Budding there can just check across, look across the course to the descent leading into the stone steps just to check the gap behind him. To the back to the two Belgians. And look at Logan Owen from the United States now. You can see the gap there that Grab lost just in that little tumble. Lost contact with that group of four that are really now going to be looking at the last two laps going for that podium place. Logan Owen very inspired about today. The hopes and the possibilities in this race. And no shortage of support for him out there. There'll be plenty of home support. I'm sure he's got his, his fan clubber here. But I am still I'm surprised he's not had more of an impact on the uh, on the front of the race from the beginning, from the start. I thought he'd be closer to be chasing Van der Poel for a lap or two. The other Belgian I've not spotted at the moment that was second place in the first three World Cups behind Van der Poel is uh, Quinton Hermans. I think we saw another couple of Belgians sneaking into the top ten as they came across the finish line at the end of that third lap. He was a definite contender at the beginning of the season, but broke his collarbone at Leuven the week before the, uh, the World Cup in uh, Houston Zolder over Christmas that came back for a fifth place in Hugerheide. Very fast recovery from a broken collarbone, that one. And it stopped snowing here at the venue. I'm sure the weather gods have got something else in store for us, Peter. There'll be... Uh, <laughs> it, I can't think what that we haven't had this week, but there'll be something out there that's going to come and you change the course again. <laughs> can't fight Mother Nature, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Two laps to go for our leader. Still looking great. Yeah, totally in control of this. See if he's increased his 26 second lead from last lap. I would say that's definitely increased. Martin Budin just crosses Ruhr River Road onto the finishing straight, but Van der Poel's down the far end of the course by now, around the back of the VIP tent on the floodplain. Logan is right with the Belgians now. Yes. 
42 seconds, so that's... Forty-four seconds, big gap. So the battle now is the, the bronze medal battle for me. And there is Logan Owen, right in the midst in the Stars and Stripes jersey of the United States. He is in fifth place, 104 back behind our leader. Interesting whether the, the battle for third actually takes that group closer to uh, Martin Budding for, for silver. At the moment, Budding's looking good. He's riding in control. He's not really trying to chase Van der Poel. I think he knows his limitations. He's, he realized first lap that he wasn't going to be able to ride at that, that speed for 40 minutes. But for, this looks four guys there going for going for third Swiss rider grab would have been on the back of that group for not for that slip on the uh, on the last lap Logan Owen right now for the United States in a bid for a possible bronze medal today Check rider Tupolik, he's just dangling off the back of that group, just a handful of seconds behind. That's uh, He's riding above his, his World Cup level for sure there. He's not been in the top 10 in a, in a World Cup this season. The Czechs love this. Uh, they love the snow and the ice. We Does talked uh, off the air about uh, Martin Vita as well, uh, who really seems has seemed to excel in, in snow. Absolutely, yes. He was... Uh, the winner in Hugenheide two weeks ago at the final World Cup. First time for over 10 years. We haven't had a Belgium on the elite men's podium in a World Cup, which was an uh, incredible record. Bino on that one just looks so confident on the snow and the ice. I'm sure he woke up happy this morning when he saw three or four inches of snow had fallen. And back to our leader now. Going to be a full day today of World Championship action from Louisville, Kentucky, as you watch live along with us, the World Championships. Owen is there, right in the midst. Simon, what do you think Logan is thinking about now in terms of tactics? I mean, just before we talk about Owen Van der Poel coming in for a bike change. Probably just a little bit of build-up of uh, snow on the chain, just to be on the safe side. He's got such a cushion of lead there that he won't lose any time with that. And yeah, Owen is ahead of the Belgians now. Yeah. Or flip-flopping. He needs to be smart. I think he just needs to, at the moment, he just needs to make sure he secures a podium place. I don't think he can really worry too much about the two Dutch guys. He just needs to make sure he gets clear for this, of this group. So he needs to pick his moment and actually make an effort that, that, that counts, that can break these guys, not just sit on the front of the group and just ride at a tempo pace that the others can follow. There he goes, there he goes. Owen on the move for the United States. We're located right at the start finish line here and I can tell you there are a lot of people getting lined up here. There are a lot of American flags here. Owen chain came off then I think, just slipped off on that corner. Just had to run with the bike get his chain back on and he's lost contact with the Belgians in that few seconds it's just a little slips like that that just make the difference at this level you know it's just a second or two here and there Logan has had a second a third a fourth and two fifths this season
And it does show you how things can change so quickly. Absolutely. Definitely lost some seconds there. He needs to get back to that group. The problem in these conditions is just pushing a little bit too hard. Just not being smooth, not keeping the power under check. Just pedaling out of a corner a little bit too early and it's so slick that uh, as we've seen with even with Van der Poel, you know, it's just uh, the back wheel overtakes the front wheel. You end up facing the wrong way on the course. And it's a few seconds lost. All right, the crowd making noise here. We're going out of the bell lap, the last lap. 33 minutes, 54 seconds into the race. Peter Graves, Simon Bernie, happy to be with you for this live telecast today of the World Cyclocross Championships. Budding, who has run uh, solidly in second throughout the entirety of the race from the Netherlands. Van der Bos looking behind. He's not going to see anybody. Budding has not come across the finish line yet. Still putting time into, into his teammate. Another handful of seconds that lap. Bell lap for him. All right, and there you're going to have big cheers for the American. And they are imploring him on this, the final lap. Running at six now. Four Belgians in the top ten, two minutes there covering the uh, two minutes 15, five Belgians in the top ten. But at the moment, only one on the podium. Peters and Klepper battling with Tupelik for the final podium place. Logan Owen can get back to them and even if he can take it to a sprint he needs to be in that group too to be in contention for that final medal place at the moment the Dutch guys have got that first and second tied up but this is a bit of a masterclass from Van der Poel now Peter is Still not made contact. Peter, 
Tobolik of the Czech Republic in the middle of those two uh, Belgian riders. Czechs have got great history of world championships. Riders that you maybe don't hear about so much during the season, but especially in the younger categories, the uh, Federation do a good job with them training as, as a group. And especially when the conditions are like this, they, they do excel. Just had Max Chance go by uh, our broadcast location. Saw that just a moment ago. Max out of Boulder, Colorado. On the final lap here. Just looking at Tupolik. Best World Cup of 12th place this year, and he's he's looking he's looking good. And Owen's back with that group. Here he goes. Watch Logan Owen, stars and stripes for the United States, and again he's on the charge. And that's Peter's podium effort done with. Can't afford to sit down and start sulking on the last lap of World Championships. So he's down to one Belgian, one Czech, and an American for that final podium place, Peter. I don't think Peters is going to get back to that group. Well, and the sun is starting to come out here. As Simon has aptly said, we have seen all kinds of weather down here this week in the buildup to these uh, historic championships. It certainly will be a glitter of gold for Vanderpol. Being a little cautious in there, maybe at this point. Yeah, uh, he's he's, uh, he's got a, such a such a good cushion of time. Forty. 52 seconds on that last lap. Uh, two plicks. Two plicks moving clear in that third place spot. We're presuming that Budding is still on his own in second. Two plick in third, being chased by Owen. And Nicolas Klepper from Belgium. And here we go. Yes, he is number one, Simon. Great ride. Like he pulled out his last year's race number, I think, there. So he repeats yet again. And this is Budding. Good, solid ride by Budding. Almost we forgot about him at times, and that's 40 minutes. And the pole off the front and the group chasing behind, but now we've got a bit of a tangle on the final camber. Tupolik still in the bronze medal position there. Dominic Grob of Switzerland also among the top few riders. And the silver medal coming in now. From Budding of the Netherlands. And now the battle for the bronze and how well it turned out. Well, you have graphic proof of it now. And here comes Logan Owen from the United States. A very solid fourth place ride. Solid, but I think you'll be disappointed with that. I think Tupolik for me was the ride of uh, the ride of the day out of the names that we thought might be on the podium. I'm sure our Belgian colleagues next door are gonna be disappointed with their first race of the day. Not very often they miss out on the podium. Bermans in eighth place, 147 back. He 
It certainly is going to be a very full day of World Championship racing here today. I'm interested to see what the sun, if the sun comes out again, just it just needs to warm up that top layer and you could see some mud coming through the snow. It would make a big difference. Thirty minutes until the women start, so I'm guessing bike preparation for those is going to be based on what we're seeing in this race. White from the United States, and here's the sprint to the finish. That was Curtis White out of New York State. Katie Compton supporter there. That was a great reminder. He had that with him in his jersey. Uh, he looks happy. Yeah, very. Yeah. And he should be. He should, indeed. That's a incredible performance. Yeah, that was just a well, well measured, well controlled race from him and a young rider who is likely to go on to be yet another legend i'm sure i'm sure It's been fun too, Simon, hasn't it? To see so many, you know, old friends down here and stuff. It's been a kind of a bit of a reunion. It has, yeah. Cross Worlds tends to be the, the one place where everybody shows up once a year to remind your friends you're still alive. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there you Drink have beer. the unofficial. Matthew Vanderpool uh, coming up with the win, 40-47. And for the United States, Logan Owen in a very solid fourth place, 123 back. For Great Britain. First Brit, 17th, 18th. Jake and Jack Wormersley and Ravenscroft. Good rides, top 20 for them. I think they can be, uh, they can be content with that. It's been a while since we've had a junior. Roger Hammond was our great junior world champion in Leeds 1992 went on to have a great cyclocross and road racing career recently become manager of a new pro county road team in Great Britain I see David Lombardo just coming across the finish line now out of Crystal Lake Illinois finishing up his race Teammate Mariana Voss up in 25 minutes. I'm sure she's going to have watched that race with an amount of interest. Great start for the Netherlands. And then with Lars van der Haar in the uh, elite race, Mike Tunis and Corner van Kessel in the under 23 race, Netherlands have got a strong, strong squad. 12 months out from home world championships. I'm sure they're going to keep moving forward in the next season. And a look back uh, to the dramatic start of this race today. Our first race of what is going to be an exciting day, a full day of cyclocross competition. And despite that fall, uh, Matthew Vanderpol has put in a great clinic he today. Did. Yeah, that was it. Exactly that, a clinic. Yeah, I can't really see where Peters can uh, be too aggrieved with the Czech guy for that incident. I think he brought it on himself. 
but it definitely knocked him out of contention for that third place. All right, well, uh, it looks like very quickly we're going to be having uh, some words with our winner Mathieu down there. Mathieu Van Der Poel, many congratulations. You've done 25 races this year. You won all 25 of them, and you're world champion. How does it feel? Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, from the beginning, I had a great feeling, and the crowd was just screaming all the time. And it was amazing to ride in these circumstances uh, a world championship. It was natuurlijk dat ene momentje hè, waar hij materiaalproblemen had en moest wisselen van fiets. Ja, ik weet niet of het uh, van mijn val kwam, maar dat was eigenlijk... Uh, Ja, een domme fout. Ik had niks uh, reden om uh, een beetje zenuwachtig te worden of zo, maar het werd gewoon gladder en gladder. En uh, <coughs> ik schoof onderuit voordat ik het door had en ik viel op de kant van mijn derailleur. En ik weet nog van Koppenberg vorig jaar dat dat dan uh, problemen kan opleveren. En uh, ik dacht ook dat ik mijn lekker band was aan het rijden, dus ik heb gewoon uh, gewisseld voor de zekerheid. Proficiat, congratulations. Dank u wel.